hay again. If you remember from the last video, we saw the different parts that constitute a Diana software, the Diana environment. Then we have mainly five panels. The main panel on the left, where we have all the options. The PWIN panel, where we have the model development and we have all the geometries, meshes, and also in the, during the results, the graphical interpretation of them. Then have, uh, we have on the top the toolbox uh, panel with all different toolboxes and the interaction with the ANA software. And then the advanced uh, properties for the different options that we choose in the main panel. And lastly, the Diana communication panel. Then we are ready to start with the model development. To do that, we decided to divide the workflow in three different videos. The first two that involve the pre-processing of the model and the last one that involve the post-processing of the model. In the first video, we are going to work with the geometry development, the assignment of the different material properties and the definition of the cross-section of the beam. In the second video, we are going to apply some conditions over our geometry, what is the same, the boundary conditions or supports and the loading conditions. In the last video, we are going to mesh our geometry with the conditions and then we are going to define the different inputs to have the uh, interaction with the computational engine and proceed with the linear elastic analysis. Then we are going to move on to the results viewing. So we are going to have some graphical interpretation for results over our geometry. For starting with the model development, we need to go to the toolboxes and click over the new uh, project. When we do that, we open a new window where we have to find the name of the project. In our case, we are going to call BIM EL that corresponds to Elastic. We need to define the folder where we want to save the file, the project, the case element and then we have to select the kind of of uh, model that we want so in our case it's a structural model so we leave check the option structural and we leave and check the other two options the dimensions uh, of the model must be two-dimensional because we are going to do to use uh, linear elements or beam elements for beam and the model size should be uh, at least 100 meters. We have to uh, we have to have into consideration that if we don't choose a proper length, for example, if we choose 10 meters and our beam is higher than this uh, length, we are uh, Diana is going to complain and it's going to show us a, a message error message in the messages screen. So I should recommend to go for 100 meters. The measure and the mesh order uh, should be as by default. As soon as the viewing panel is in blue, we can start with our model development. As you can see, our beam is a two-span concrete beam that has 26 meters total length and 13 meters each span. So it's a symmetric, uh, a symmetric beam. We have a cross-section about 700 millimeters height and 400 millimeters width. We have different steel reinforcement arrangement, but for this example, we are going to skip the reinforcement and just focus on the concrete cross section. Then we, we can start by creating the geometry. To do that, we have to go to the third uh, row of tool uh, in the toolboxes and then select the creation line tool. As you can see, when we click at this button, we get uh, a new window where we have to put the name of the line, the initial starting point, and the end point of the line. It's important when we do finite element models to be organized and label everything properly. Then we can go, we can track back always to our steps and correct anything if it's if something is wrong. In that case, we are going to start for the left span. Name, left span. You have to notice that the coordinates that we are putting here are global coordinates. So the model and the points and the lines and the geometries are always defined in uh, global coordinates. So we have the first span 
and then the right span. As the coordinates are in global, we start from the second uh, node to create the right span. Well, now you can see in the viewing panel the two spans, the two concrete spans, and here in the main panel you can see in, within the shapes option the left and right span. Once we finish with the, geomet the geometry, we can move on to the material properties definition. To do that, we go to the model, materials, add material. Then here we have to define the name of all materials. So we are defining the concrete material as it's going to be elastic. We can label it as EL corresponding to elastic. And then we can stick to the concrete design codes. So if we don't need to define anything special, any singular for this material, we can just use the design codes. We remove or we uncheck the plasticity and cracking options and we only leave check the elasticity option. If we click OK, we go to the extended menu where we can relabel again the, the material and then we can see the different options in the model code. If we move to the direct input section, we can overwrite some of the parameters uh, that are used in the model code. In that case, if we leave everything in blank, we are going to use the model code parameters. We are going to leave everything in blank except the, model, the Young's modulus, which we are going to define our personalized mod modulus. Have, uh, you have to be aware about the units. We are working uh, usual when we talk about uh, young modulus in megapascals, but now we have newtons square meters. So we need to add six more zeros to correspond uh, to the to the proper units. If we close, we have now a new uh, section in the main panel that is materials and within uh, we can find the concrete elastic material. If we check over the material, we can see the different properties, the different advanced properties here, and we can add even more uh, parameters on the material. Once we have finished with the material properties, we can just define the cross-section properties of the, of the beam. To do that, we go to model again, element geometries, add element geometry, and here, as we as we did for the material properties, we can just write down the name of our cross section that we can call concrete slash CS referring to the cross section. Here, it's important that we target the elements that we are going to define or to which we are going to sign this cross-section. In that case, we have lines, so we need to select shape type lines. The element class, as we said before, is a 2D, so it's only a 2D model. Uh, then we can just select uh, a class to beam elements. We don't, need, we don't need to go to higher class elements because we don't want to consider the shear in this, uh, in this model. So, we are going to have an uh, element based on the Euler-Bernoulli uh, theory. If we click OK, we get a new panel where we can define, define the parameters of our cross-section. We have to choose the shape of the cross-section. In this, in all cases, a rectangle, so it's fine if we leave uh, by default. And then we define the height of the cross-section and the width. That if you remember is 700 by 400. What happened with the local axis? This is very important to have into consideration. Uh, our model, uh, we said it's a 2D model, so our working plane is the y-x, so we don't have uh, anything on the z-direction. But uh, at, at then if we stick to this uh, working plane, when we define the axis automatically, the strong axis of the beam uh, becomes on the uh, it becomes parallel to the z direction. 
and the weak axis of the beam becomes parallel to the y direction. So if we leave the local elements, uh, the local element axis by default, we need to apply the load in the y direction. Otherwise, if we change and we choose to define the another um, local axis, we have to consider how they are going to be oriented in order to apply the load on the strong uh, direction of the cross section. But for now, we can leave uh, by default and then we can apply the loads on the y direction. Unfortunately, there is no option now in the Diana, in this version of Diana, to see the local axis of the elements. So it's something that you have to, to have in mind when you create your, your geometries and your cross-section definition. Well, we have uh, already finished with the first video. We designed the geometry of our beam. We assigned uh, or we created at least a material property, the concrete, elastic concrete. We also defined the geometry with its characteristics. And now it's uh, time to define the conditions of the geometry. So the boundary conditions or supports and the loading. But that's something that we are going to see in the next video. Thank you. See you soon.